Today we're going to be talking about variation functions. And our first variation function, please make sure you write down this top part with the name of it, direct variation. When y varies directly as x, there is some constant k. Back in chapter, I think it was 2, when we were talking about slope, that was slope where this is our function. And k is called the constant of variation. You could also think about it like this. If we have y equals kx, when we solve for k, we get y over x is equal to k. So when we're doing an example, your constant of variation is always y over x. Okay, so if y is varying directly as x, and <coughs> y equals 15 when x equals 5, so therefore I know that Negative 15 equals k times 5, which is x. Solving for k, we get negative 3. So our general variation function is negative 3x. We want to find y when x equals 3. So I need to find y when x equals 3. So that is going to be negative 9. What you could also do is you could also use this equation here, where we have y over x. So we have negative 15 is to 5, as y is to 3, and we solve, and you end up getting negative 9 that same way. Okay, joint variation. Make sure you write down joint variation, and make sure you're writing down the words. Y varies jointly as x and z. If we have some constant where x and z now it's varying jointly, so they're both in the numerator. Okay, so y varies jointly as x and z. So you have some constant of variation that's telling you how they're varying. Find y when x equals 10 and z equals 5. But I need this bottom part. If y equals 12... When x equals 3 and z equals 8. So we have 12 equals k times 24. So solving for k, we get 1 half. So our general variation function is 1 half x z. Now, what we can do is now plug in x equals 10, z equals 5 x equals 10, z equals 5, and y ends up equaling 25. Again, the other way to do that is solve this equation up here for your constant of variation. So y over x, z is equal to k. So y is 12 when x is 3 and z is 8. That equals... I'm looking for y here when I have 10 times 5. And solving that, you also get 25 for y. So what I'm doing here is I'm showing you guys basically two different ways to do the problem. Okay, inverse variation. This is really what we're talking about in this chapter. If y varies inversely as x... There's some constant k such that x times y equals k or y equals k over x. This x times y equals k, that's going to be super important to us. Okay, so if r varies inversely as t, that means r equals k over t or k equals r times t. Now, since the constant of variation is the same for each one of our problems, we know that if r varies inversely as t and r equals negative 6 when t equals 2, we want to find r when t equals negative 7. So by both sides by negative 7, r is going to be equal to 12 over 7. 
Okay. So that's really using the second method. Okay. I didn't even find my constant of variation. If I wanted to find my constant of variation, I would have plugged in negative six times two. K equals negative 12. So our general formula is negative 12 equals R times T, or you could look at it as R equals negative 12 over T. Okay, now we have a combined variation. Suppose F varies directly as G. So F is going to vary in some constant directly as G. G goes on top, and F varies inversely as H. Find G when F equals 6 and H equals 5 if G equals 18 when H equals 3 and F equals 5. So this if part is what you need to start with to find your constant of variation because they've given me each one of my variables. They've given me numbers to solve for so I could solve for K. So F is 5. I'm looking for K. G is 18. H is 3. Um, 18 over 3, that is 6. So K is equal to 5, 6. So our general equation is this. F equals 5, 6 times by G over H. Okay, now it's a matter of finding G. So this is what I'm looking for when F is 6 and H is negative 5. So F is 6. H is negative 5, and I'm looking for G. On this right side, this is going to cancel to be a negative 1. So I basically have negative 1 6 G because the The five in this, um, I'm sorry, the five and the negative five cancel. So then I multiply both sides by a negative six, and I get a negative 36. Okay, so our last example the apparent length of an object, I'm going to call that L, is inversely proportional to one's distance from the object. So the distance D, I'm gonna call that D. The Earth is about 300 million miles from the sun and Venus is about 60 million miles from the sun. How much larger would the diameter of the sun appear on Venus than on Earth? So let's first use that first sentence and come up with an equation. So the apparent length is in some constant of proportionality to one's distance from the object. Or the length of the object times the distance is getting equal or constant of proportion. Okay, Earth is about 93 million miles from the sun. <clears throat> so the distance of our Earth is 93. The distance of Venus is 67. How much larger would the diameter uh, would the sun appear on Venus than on Earth? So we know that the length of the Earth times the Earth's distance, which is 93, using this equation here, since they're in the same proportion, the same constant of proportionality, I can set these two equal as 67 over the length of our object on Venus. So now what you want to think about is we want to find how much larger would the diameter of the sun appear on Venus than on Earth. Okay, so I'm looking for Venus over Earth. I'm looking for uh, 
Okay, so if I divide both sides by 67, that's going to cancel those out. And I divide by the length on Earth because I'm looking for how much larger Venus is than Earth. We have 93 over 67 is going to be the ratio of them, or it's going to tell us how much larger it is. So that's going to be 1.39 is the ratio of those, which is telling us how much larger Venus is than Earth. Okay, you guys have four lesson questions. I didn't even give you one of the more challenging word problems. So please make sure you try all these lesson questions and make sure you give me your best effort and your answers on time.